7.30 now on this Monday morning. Uh, just took a little time off last week. It's nice to be back here with all of you, though, on this CBS News Minnesota's morning update. So let's get you straight up to speed on the news and weather, because if you are heading out the door this morning, it is muggy out there. It is humid. Riley, though, tells us the dew points will start coming down. They'll start feeling a little bit better. But ooh, if you have a kiddo heading out to camp today, uh, make sure you pack that water bottle. Should be nice, though, by this afternoon. Get a little breeze in there right around 81. And then by tonight should be a very pretty night. I'm sure it'll be a pretty sunset if you're sitting outside. Uh, let's talk about this, though. This is what we are talking about today. Those self checkouts at the stores. Do you love them or do you hate them? Personally, I'm in the love category of the self checkouts, but 76% of shoppers, so two thirds of shoppers took a survey last year, said that they had issues with the self checkout, right? I mean, that happens, right? You know, sometimes maybe your little one double scans. I don't know. I'm just saying maybe speaking from personal experience here, you got everybody's got that little one that must do the scanning and sometimes you get two cans of cooking spray when you only need one. Uh, and, but you know what? There's always somebody there. There's always somebody there to make sure you're doing OK. If, if whatever your scanner is not working, if that barcode just isn't doing something right. Uh, people are frustrated with them, but stores say, no, look, they are here to stay. You got COVID, which, you know, well, you're talking about you don't want as many interactions with cashiers. And then, of course, we know in every single industry, the labor shortage. So if you think about it, when you look at these uh, self checkouts here, you know, you have one person. I know I know when I go into a Target, you can have as many as eight or nine in there. Uh, when you go into the grocery store, sometimes you'll have one or two, but you have one person working there and making sure everything's running on smoothly. They keep that person moving though, just, you know, with little things here and there too. And then that camera that looks right down on you. Uh, what do you think? How do you feel about the self checkout? How do you feel about the people that bring their whole entire cart? into the self checkout. Do you like it? Do you find it frustrating? We'd love to talk about it. Let us know if you're watching here on Facebook, leave a comment and we'll read through a couple of those a little on later in the show. But now, though, let's get you caught up on the news. That's because opening statements are set to begin today in the murder trial for a Chicago man who's accused of killing a youth baseball coach. So in July of last year, police say that Jamal Smith shot Jay Bouton after the drivers had had an altercation on Highway 169 in Plymouth. Shooting happened as Bouton drove his son home from a baseball game, and that's why prosecutors plan, they say, to seek a stiffer sentence because the boy witnessed the shooting. Then at the University of Minnesota today, administrators are holding, holding listening sessions with parents and students and neighbors about campus safety. U of M police say that campus off, off campus crime has surged 45% in recent years. There's going to be a special forum tonight there. You'll have Minneapolis police. You have campus police. Also Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry. This is open to students and community members from the nearby neighborhoods. Also a new face to City Hall says that he wants to make Minneapolis the safest city in America. So that's Dr. Cedric Alexander. He's been nominated by Mayor Fry as our first ever commissioner of community safety. Now, Dr. Alexander would oversee several departments. That does include police and the fire department. My goal here in the role that I'm going to play is to make sure those officers who want to be employed, who want to be here, who want to make a difference, they're going to have nothing but my support. And I'm going to ask the community to support them as well. You're going to be paid Dr. Alexander, who's a trained psychologist, uh, has to be approved by the Minneapolis City Council. And if that happens, he would be the city's highest paid official. Salary is $300,000, and the council will consider his nomination next week. Now, part of Minneapolis's plan to create more safe and unified communities involves events like this one you see right here. This is open streets. This is where they close the roads to cars and trucks and all those so you can walk and bike down the street. This was on Franklin Avenue yesterday. Yeah, neighbors enjoyed a little shopping, a little biking down there, live music, and just really the chance to enjoy each other. Yeah, I think especially for different restaurants and different vendors, it's great to see them out here and then we can learn more about them and then hopefully go check out their storefronts. 
Yeah, right? They're so cool, these open streets events. You see so, so many cool things. Uh, lots more uh, of them are on deck. You still got East Lake Street coming up, West Broadway, Minnehaha Avenue. We put all the information on our website, WCCO.com, so go there if you're looking for a fun activity to do on a Sunday. Uh, the latest COVID surge fueling a summer surge. Uh, new cases averaging more than 108,000 a day over the past two weeks. So look at this here. This is the CDC's latest COVID community levels map. See us? We're in green. So we're pretty good here in Minnesota, but the map showing 60% of the U.S. is at high or medium risk of getting the virus right now. I mean, California, look at all that red out there. Florida, uh, green is low. So we are doing okay, fairly low risk in this area, but they're saying it's this BA5 strain that's responsible for more than half of all these new COVID cases, right? We're now up to BA5. Doctors say if you have had Omicron or any of the other variants, you can actually get reinfected now. So probably more quickly than you thought you had a little protection there. Pfizer and vaccine do expect an updated, uh, Pfizer and Moderna, excuse me, say they do expect an updated vaccine to be ready by October. So Yosemite National Park in California, look at this. So much smoke and fire out there, hundreds of firefighters battling the Washburn fire. They're doing it from the air and from the ground. The flames, though, still out of control. Lots of evacuations out there. And right now, these fires, because uh, it is in the park, uh, so hopefully not homes are being affected, but they are uh, threatening 500 giant sequoias, some of those trees as much as 2,000 years old. This is a pretty neat time-lapse video. You can see the wire fire just exploding there. It's now at more than 700 acres since it started up last week, and hmm, that's hard. Uh, for decades, Iowa has typically kicked off the presidential primary season, but that could soon change for Democratic voters. So you remember the 2020 caucus chaos, right, in Iowa? Uh, now the Democratic National Committee, actually for a while, has been thinking about shaking up the schedule. And you see Minnesota there in the yellow. We are among 16 states as well as Puerto Rico looking to jump to the front of the line. And the reason here, they want more of a focus on state diversity. They want more competitiveness. Uh, political experts say that these first few contests, contests, the ones in Iowa and then New Hampshire, uh, South Carolina, they can make or break a presidential campaign and, and perhaps take on more weight than they should. They create a momentum, they create a message that the party has decided and they've decided very quickly when really the parties would be better served by a calendar that was longer and a process that engaged more people. So 16 states want to do it, but the way the rules work is no more than five will hold their contest before that first Tuesday in March. State officials are traveling to D.C. to make their pitches before the DNC's Rules and Bylaws Committee. And they do expect to vote at the beginning of August and then they get the full DNC vote in September. Marvel's Cinematic Universe proves once again that it's the superheroes ruling the box office. This is the latest film, Thor, Love and Thunder, debuting with $143 million in North America. That's pretty good for first place this weekend. It's a franchise best for the God of Thunder. It's also another success story of this summer box office season. Box office season. The film has already made more than $300 million globally. But the summer's mega hit, Top Gun Maverick. Third spot in the seventh weekend. It's still holding on to number three. Total here, almost $600 million. It's set to cross that mark by today, making it one of only about a dozen films ever to achieve that. I think I'm the only This is Jack eating his lunch here. Uh, Jack was paralyzed during a high school hockey game. This was 10 years ago uh, now, but he has been working so hard uh, sharing this video to his Twitter account, and that hard work has been paying off. He says that just six months ago, he could not control his hands like this. I mean, this is incredible, right? Uh, he's been in all kinds of trials here. 
Uh, this one, he says, he credits to an upper uh, body, upper limb stimulation trial. In fact, it's a trial that his foundation is raising money for. So not only has Jack been working hard sort of personally and physically here, but he's also been working hard raising money to get uh, research for all of this. So we just love to see this and love to see uh, what Jack is up to. Um, let's talk now about today's talker, though. It's those self-checkout lines and want to know, do you love them? Do you hate them? Do you think they, we should have more of them? And Deborah says, when I'm in a hurry, my husband will not go through self-checkout. He wants no pricing mistakes, right? That's, you know, I, I get it. I totally get it there. Thanks, Deborah, for sharing. Maggie says, I prefer checking out with an actual person, right? So there is something for sure to that. She will use a checkout, self-checkout if you need to or don't have a choice, but I like interacting with an actual person when I check out. So that's tough, you know, we do have the labor shortage, but these are jobs, these are people's jobs here. And I always enjoy talking to the checkout people there too. Uh, Annette says, I like self-checkout because sometimes they are faster and you don't have to wait in line because they never had enough checkers on duty, right? I do miss though talking with people when I check out for sure. Absolutely. We do, I do it with like a sh limited number of items there. Um, Jenny says, I don't like it. I always say, I don't work here. <laughs> I go wait in line. Nope, it's not for everybody, but my guess is it is not going anywhere. And I think we have one more from Tamara. My son is so accustomed to helping my husband scan items in the self checkout. Yep. Uh huh. When I took him to the regular checkout line, he walked behind the counter and step directly in front of the checker. Oh, Tamara, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, my little ones also <laughs> love to do the checking out, whether they are in the self check or they are in the regular line. I'm sure it's um, very patient checkers <laughs> at the Target near our house. Uh, that is your morning update here from CBS News Minnesota. Sorry about my microphone. I'll get it together the rest of this week. I promise you we'll see you tomorrow at 730.